So you think your VA or virtual assistant is sharing your deals and you don't know what to do? Well, let me share with you how we hire to prevent this, identify if it's happening, and finally, how we deal with it if we see it is happening from my own experience. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson. I've been selling on Amazon now, doing arbitrage for the last five years. In the UK, I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller. Check this out. In the USA, I'm a six-figure Amazon seller. Check this out. And also, including those two businesses and Fast Track FBA, I have over 70 VAs across all the companies. So obviously, I have a lot of experience in hiring and obviously dealing with this problem. Now, if you want to know more and obviously see about my journey and what I'm learning, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. But hey, enough about me. What we're going to go through today? Well, first things first, number one, I'm going to talk about how to hire correctly. This is really important for the fundamentals. Number two, I'm going to talk about the contract and what you should be thinking about there. Number three, I'm going to talk about the motivation, creating motivation to not share deals. Number four, I'm going to talk about monitoring and how we do that in our business about sharing deals. Number five, I'm going to share about if you think you've found evidence of sharing deals, what to do then. And then number six, I'm going to talk about how to actually deal with proof of deal sharing obviously what we've done in the past here. So let's get started. So first things first, before I jump in, if you think you have found a problem right now, i.e. you have actually found your VA sharing deals, then do jump straight to the fifth chapter. But what I'd really recommend is actually watching the entirety of this video. Why? Because obviously if you are going to get rid of your VA, you probably want to hire the next one in the right way. And this video is going to help explain that. So watch the whole video, or if you're in a rush, jump to the fifth chapter. Now, before I begin or get you into this, what I will just say is that I've been through these issues many, many times throughout my five years of selling on Amazon. And even right now, I've got about 70 VAs across three companies, of which about 30 are within my Amazon businesses. And in the past, we unfortunately have been forced to fire or let VAs go for this very problem. So it's not you know, unheard of, it does happen. Now, in addition to this, within the Fast Track FBA a business, we run what's known as the VA Academy. Now, this is whereby we've hired over 500 sourcing VAs for our clients over the last two and a half years. And that's about 250 clients. So we've got a lot of experience in dealing with this. And I just wanted to create this video to share. So number one, how to hire correctly. Well, look, the most important thing you can do in the whole process is to hire correctly. So what I'd really recommend is just be very careful where you hire from. You know, think about Facebook Marketplace, Facebook Groups, you know, kind of those websites where people are offering their services, very likely they're going to do, you know, have more than one client. Now, for example, in the Fast Track FBA VA Academy, we spend a lot of time, and I mean a lot of time, trying to get the right candidate with the right motivation to work. Now, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for people who've got really a track record of long-term employment, not working for more than one job, and also are looking for the same salary that we're offering and also match with our company values. Now, getting the right person is key. If you hire someone who, should we say, really wanted more money than you're offering, then it's very likely they're going to work two jobs, which means two clients, and very likely sharing deals. And remember, all the training in the world will not solve the problem of a bad hire. So get it right or use an agency like Fast Track FBA and we do this for you and obviously have a great aftercare service as well. Now, the second thing I'll talk about is the contract. Now, the first line of defense in making it clear that, you know, sharing deals is bad is getting this stated clearly in the contract. Now, should the worst happen and you find out you know, they are sharing deals, then the contract is going to give you the professional grounds to dismiss the VA. And obviously, you've made it very clear that they shouldn't be doing that. But let's be clear, the contract will state that they should not do this and the consequences if they do. But if the VA really wants to share deals, then this is not going to stop them. So don't rely just on this. Instead, take the advice I'm about to share coming up, which is the most important part. So this leads me nice on to my third chapter, that's motivation. Now look, contracts are great and they set out the rules, but the rules are not how we should be managing our business. Instead, we should be motivating our staff to follow not only the rules, but to go above and beyond and want to go above and beyond. For for example, my purchasing managers have, you know, my credit card details. And whilst it's clear in the rules that they should not be sharing it, what we really want is that if something were to go wrong, then the first thing they're protecting is my credit card details. Because not only do the rules state it, that's not really it, because they're motivated, because they understand that they want to protect them. Now, in the case of, should we say, sharing deals, what we really want is our VAs to protect our deals, not be giving them away. So we really need for them to understand that by sharing them, it will only increase the competition on the products that we are currently listing, 
which in turn will decrease the buy box price and which in turn will decrease the profits they can make. So for example, in my business, all the team members understand that they have a direct correlation between their bonuses and the net profit of the companies. And we have some great payouts for them. Now they understand if they share the deals, then we're going to make less money and they're going to get less bonuses, which is not something that they want. So they are motivated to protect the deal they are getting because they're going to get better bonus. And as a result, we're aligning our bonus structures with if you say, actions we want to see, which is something super important. Right, I'm just talking about bonuses and should we say dealing with VAs. And obviously we've got a lot of experience through the Fast Track FBA VA Academy. Now, also I mentioned earlier we've hired 500 VAs. Now, I've also just talked about bonus schemes. Now, the one thing I will say is if you are interested in learning about bonus schemes, check out the Fast Track FBA MBA workbook. This is a workbook we put together which documents loads of great practices, great motivational techniques, and things like bonus schemes that we've used within our business which work. I have in there four bonus schemes at different levels of sellers, you know, just beginning to big teams like, you know, 20 plus and how they operate and explain the guide with downloadable templates you can implement today. Now, have a look down below. I'll drop a link to the MBA workbook. But the one thing I will say is if you do hire a VA from the Fast Track FBA VA Academy, you get this workbook for free for life with all the updates as well. So check it out. I think you'll love it. But hey, why not hire a VA from us? Now, this leads me nice on to the fourth step, monitoring. One question you might kind of ask, and a lot of people talk about this is, should I use screen sharing or screen tracking, time tracking tools, you know, to record start and ten, end times and record the screen. My thoughts on this are, look, this can work, but if your VA is smart, which I hope they are, because you know what, the hiring smart people to work in your business and you are hiring good people, then your VA is simply going to wait for the end of the shift, log out when the screen recording stops and then go to your deal sheet and then share the deals. Even worse, you know, if they're even smarter than that, they're just going to write down the ASIN or even the web address and then do it on another computer. Like you're never going to catch them. So I wouldn't rely on that. And when you do time tracking, people start looking at the time. I don't care about the time. I care about the results, I care about the number of deals they can find. So I don't care if they work six hours or 12 hours. I care about the number of deals that they find. And hopefully they want to find more because of the bonuses we just talked about. Now, in my business, we take a two stage approach to this. So let me run it through. So once we've hired a great person, we run them for seven days through our training within the Fast Track FBA VA Academy. Now, this is lots of like, you say, over the shoulder training training, one-to-one -one training, but also practice time. Now, throughout the whole of these seven days, we do track and we use a bit of software called TerraMind. Now, I'm going to just put out there, this is probably one of the most invasive tracking software I've ever seen in the history of my life. To give you an idea, it will not only screen record, it will do mouse activity, but it will also scan your emails. It will see what you're doing. If you're loading up any files with the name CV or curriculum vitae in them, we're going to get alerted to it. It does a lot of things, which is very interesting, which allows us just to see what's going on. You know, we are looking at a range of variables, you know, and I mentioned them before, activity, mouse movement, web page, general user activity, and then also like those kind of negative things, i.e. like looking at CVs, applying, continuing to apply for jobs, for example, or, you know, not working the expected time that we expect them to be during practicing. So we're looking for positives, i.e. action, but also negatives as well. Now, what we do is we review the whole of this. We look for all these areas before we sign off the VA from training. And if we're not happy with the VA, then they are going to fail. Now, we head on to the second part which is after training. Now, after training, we will stop the monitoring. We prefer to allow the VA to get on with the work, working the hours required that they think are necessary, but instead focusing on the results, number of deals that we're going to buy. Now, if we see issues such as lack of deals, or she say maybe some issues around the first few weeks, then we might jump on for a week more tracking, but never really more than that. Normally, it's about supporting, training issues. It's not really a problem. It's just that maybe they're not something clicking. So that's when we'll do time tracking. Now, that's pretty much my thoughts on regards to tracking and how we do it. Personally, I don't think time tracking, shift tracking tools that do it record the screens are really that great because we've seen that people can just get around them and they know they're being tracked or their screens are being recorded. OK, so I'm talking about VAs now. The one thing that you'll say is hopefully you haven't got problems, but I'm guessing right now you probably have while you're watching this video. If you have, you know, I talked about earlier, hiring the right person is great, but also as well, the training and support, the tracking, the monitoring during that training is very important to identify if there are any warning signs that we can deal with. Now, the one thing I really like about the Fast Track FBA VA Academy is we do this all for you for a price which is less than what your hourly wage is if you were to do it yourself. And in addition to that, we have a 12-week aftercare support window. Any problems, you call us. We will have a team jump in and fix that with your VA. And in addition to that, we also have weekly group coaching calls with my team, whereby you can learn the best tips and tricks as a leader within your business to get the most out of them, which you're working within my own seven-figure business. Trust me, I think you're going to love it. Check out the Fast Track FBA 
the ABA Academy, link down below, and you can even book in a free 30 minute consultation call. Now this leads me nicely onto the fifth chapter, what to do if you think you have found evidence of sharing. If you think you found evidence of sharing, or should you say working for another client, then what you might do is skip straight to the next chapter to actually say, look, we have found evidence, we know this is a fact, what do I do? And I talk about that. But for me, what I want to do now is I just want to actually say, right now, maybe you're thinking, maybe you've got an intuition, you know, like you're not too sure and you haven't got 100% confirmed evidence. Do you want to share some top tips and tricks, things that I've done in the past that have maybe caught out VAs when we think they are sharing or kind of alluded and allowed us to understand? So let me go through them now. So first things first, I go through a process. And the first process is to have a call with my VA. I'm going to actually say, ask them to review some deals on their computer. Maybe I just want to check something or see how they're reviewing the deal and what they think. So ask them to see it through. And then I'm going to record the call at the same time. Now, after I say the deal review, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them to send me like a screenshot of something or, or something on their computer. I just want them to like screenshot and send me a copy of it. So what am I doing? Well, when I ask them to share that kind of screenshot or whatever it may be in by email, by chat, they're going to be live on the screen. What I've seen from our experience is maybe you know, I've noticed a name of like an English name, like Thomas Parkinson, which sounds very European. It's not really like a Filipino name in their recent chat. And if they have another client who they're working with, then it's very likely that they've talked to them through one of these platforms. And we're going to notice that. Now, if I'm on that call, what I will do, and if I notice it, I will spot one of these funny names. Like I will simply say like, hey, stop a second, just stop. Who's that? Thomas Parkinson on your chat and I'll ask to see it. Like we just stumbled on it and I'll ask them to click on it during the call. Now what will happen is they'll either show you it and there's nothing wrong and they'll be like, oh, it's Thomas Parkinson. Like he just wanted to reach out for a YouTube video, for example. And I'll say, oh, thanks, sorry. I, I thought it was something else, but it's not a problem. Thanks, let me know. Or they're gonna do what that we have seen. They get nervous, they turn off the screen share quickly, maybe even cancel the call. They'll then delete the message and then they'll call you back or reshare again. At which this point you can ask, hey, why did you delete the call? Which they'll probably say, I didn't, you know, you're just reviewing things. And obviously you can review the recording and to say, hey, that was there before you canceled the call. When we came back on, I can see it's not. Now, whether you have evidence of sharing or simply they're deleting messages or not can be seen as they're not cooperating with you. But remember, you need to have evidence through your recorded call or should we say messages that they've been sent, i.e. there was a message before and the message is now gone, i.e. they're trying to hide evidence. And again, that leads me to believe that they're not being cooperative for potential reasons to be cause of concern. And obviously when we're remote work, one of the foundations of us is trust. And if they're deleting messages and that's ruining my trust in their ability to do the job, and work for my company. Now that leads me nicely onto the next chapter, which is how to deal with proof of sharing. So by this time, you've either got proof of sharing, i.e. evidence of them actually sharing deals, i.e. you've jumped onto the screen share and you've seen like they're working for another client because they've shared deals yesterday with someone else, or they're working for another client, which is against the contract, remember, or they're deleting messages which were there and then afterwards they're not. This is something which obviously is a cause for concern and we've now got evidence. Now, before I go any further, what I really really want to express is that you should have a clear policy for disciplinaries. You should be following that policy to ensure a safe, fair and best practice in employment. Now, this is something we provide with all VAs hired through the Fast Track FBA VA Academy. We have a weekly support call where you can speak directly with my HR manager to ensure you are following the best practice. But what I also understand is that not everyone has access to this service. And so I will try my best now to create a simple structure to support you as Amazon sellers in this process going forward. But I will just say that this isn't perfect, but it will probably do for a one man person. But in an ideal world, you want to have a very clear structure that you followed and also follow the guidance of a HR professional to ensure good employment practices. So let's just recap. So right now you should have some proof of sharing or evidence of deleting messages, which goes against your contract and deleting messages is your, your ability to trust them and it goes against your contract. And so this is potentially grounds for termination of their employment. So with them deleting messages, I'll come back to again, it could be seen as them being uncooperative and obviously your ability to trust them and they fail to follow instructions. So again, grounds for termination. But before we go into any termination, we need to follow a good process. Why? Because we need to ensure that the VA has a chance to explain what's happened. I 
God, we might have got it wrong. And also, if we have other VAs within our team, then we want to show them that the company they're working for has a fair process. The boss just doesn't fire people or having a bad day, but this is also bad for motivation, by the way, but we have a fair process and they shouldn't be worried. So what I'd really recommend for you as a business leader is a range of meeting the next day with your VA at a set time and explain to them prior to that meeting the evidence, i.e. tell them what evidence you're going to talk about in that meeting before. They should be very well aware of it. Also let them know that a possible outcome of this meeting is that they could lose their job. Now we need to be honest here and let them know the seriousness or the gravity of the problems or the nature of the issues that they currently face. So when they come into it, it's not unexpected if we do have to dismiss them, but we do want to have a meeting to discuss it. Now, an example of this might be like, I want to have a meeting with you tomorrow at 5 p.m. to discuss, insert problem here. And one of the possible outcomes of this meeting is that you could lose your job, but this will be taken once we've heard all the evidence. For you, from your side, you're going to have this meeting at the agreed time in the next following day. Now, step one, I'd really recommend record this meeting. Use Skype, it's free, it's great, or like Zoom, for example. Step two, explain that today you're going to review obviously some evidence and a possible outcome of this meeting is that they could lose their job. So you expect their full and 100% cooperation with you. Step three, I would then show them the evidence and explain the evidence to them. And then step four, give them a chance to explain what their side is. Give them a chance to talk. And at this time, you should be taking notes, listening to what they've got to say and asking open-ended questions to really solicit. One thing we understand about especially working with VAs abroad in the Philippines is that they might say yes sir no sir and actually we need to ask open questions so they can't answer it yes or no which want to really learn about what's the situation why did you delete that message what was the message who is that person why did you turn the call off for example we really want to understand why then step five is to clarify any points or areas that you don't fully understand so as we ask some questions, we just want to go back and re-clarify everything. So you've been talking to Thomas Parkinson for three months now. You met him through Facebook and you say you haven't done any communication with the deals with him. Tell me about why did you said you deleted it by accident. I don't understand how you could delete it by accident, but you said it was an accident. Okay, this doesn't sound reasonable. Is there any other explanation? Like clarify those steps. Then step six, I'd really recommend just taking a short break, five to 10 minutes to review the information. You might even need a day or longer to review maybe come to a fast track FBA aftercare support call. If you're one of our customers, we have that, we can support you. But the idea is just take a break, review all the information, de-stress. And then finally, step seven, make a decision and explain the decision to the team member. I'm forced to let you go, or this time we're going to put you on a final warning. Number eight, or step eight, follow up this outcome in writing through email. If it's dismissal, explain that you've dismissed them from this effective date, or if it's a warning, it's this, and explain why. Now, what I will say is if you do dismiss, remove all access, but do also pay them for any holiday or anything outstanding and then wish them the best of luck in the future. Again, this isn't personal. They obviously have their reasons, but you're not going to take it personally. You're a professional. This is just a process you're going through. Then my top tip for you is reflect on the whole process and see how you can improve your business. Again, maybe it's the hiring. Come to us, see what we can help you with. Now, what I will say is hopefully you've liked that video. And this is a really uncomfortable, should you say, video to make. I never like having to do them, but I appreciate this something that a lot of us might have worries about. And I just wanted to share some top tips that I've done in my past, but also we've supported our clients with. So what I would say is if you are going through this, it's probably because you are worried about what's happening and you might be looking for a new VA soon. So what I'd recommend for you is watch my video that I've created called Hiring, or should I say, Watch Me Interview, Interviewing VAs for the Fast Track FBA VA Academy. And you can see how I do my actual interview process for that VA Academy. I'll drop it around here. Check that out. I think you'll love it. But now what I will say is hopefully you like this video. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. And hey, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button down below. But for myself, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.